Okay, thank you for that wonderful introduction. My name is Errol Olkay, and I'm here to talk about the Blended Learning and Libraries, the Google IT Support Certificate Program. So we've all heard about MOOCs and online learning. You may be offering lynda.com or coursera.org in your library systems, and Google has developed an online training program that's currently hosted on coursera.org. And it's designed to equip learners with the skills and education necessary for an entry-level IT support role. So think of like a help desk or a call center job, and of course there's room to grow from there. After offering this program for a year, Google wasn't satisfied with the completion rate. You may or may not have experienced something similar with the completion rate of MOOCs in your libraries. So the program model that we have, that I'm here to tell you about today with the Google IT Support Certificate Program in libraries may be helpful to you, okay? So instead of repeating Google IT Support Certificate Program, I'm just going to refer to it as uh, GISC from now on, just to make things a little easier. So in the second year of offering GISC on Coursera.org, Google started looking to partnerships with nonprofit organizations like Goodwill in the United States. And Google wanted to expand this into Canadian, uh, Canadian markets, but Goodwill doesn't operate the same way here in Canada, as it does, like it does in the US. So Google looked to the Toronto Public Library as a large library system with a strong connection to other Canadian libraries and felt they'd be a good candidate to partner with. So at the end of the day, Surrey, Edmonton, Hamilton, and Toronto libraries were chosen. Plus, we have an online cohort of remote learners, people living in parts of outside of urban areas who can't attend our in-person programs. At each site, there are 50 learners in each cohort. The program started in April. It goes through to December 2019, so we're still very much in the infancy stages of the program. And there will be a second cohort of another 50 learners into 2020, next year. So my role in this program is to add value through the provision of online and in-person office hours, facilitation of weekly in-person learning circles, and that's one of the more interesting topics we're going to dive a little deeper in today, and a development of a weekly e-newsletter with relevant information and resources for the learners. So this is where the term blended learning model comes in, because we're combining the benefits of both online learning and in-person learning facilitation. That's the goal here. So Google's providing funding for my role, the dedicated learning facilitator. As well, it, well, I'll just tell you a little bit about my role. I'm uh, providing office hours for the remote learners, in-person office hours for the uh, Surrey cohort, the local cohort, in-person learning circles, and the weekly newsletter. Sorry, I'm realizing that's a repetition. Mode. Plus, they're uh, providing funding for laptops for those who demonstrate need. So if somebody comes in with a laptop on their last legs or the battery is dying, we have a small fund to give them, offer them them. Uh, and 12 months of free access to the GISC program on Coursera.org, which is approximately like $800 value. So I'll tell you just a, very briefly about the, the program that's hosted on Coursera.org. There are five courses. First one is Technical Support Fundamentals, where they learn the basics of computer hardware and the history of computers. Course two is the Bits and Bytes of Computer Networking, where they learn about IPs and IP addresses and how computers communicate on a network and retrieve information from servers. Operating systems in you, becoming a power user, so using commands on Windows PowerShell and Linux terminal to uh, manage computers broadly, and IT support, administration support, so backing up systems, and then defense against the digital dark arts is course five. Now it's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. And industry partners have agreed to recognize this certificate uh, in, in the IT field. So I'll talk a little bit about our recruitment strategy, but first, we all know that British Columbia's tech industry is growing, and in order to meet the projected growth, there's a need to expand the talent pool. And uh, according to the 2017 BC Tech Industry Report, there's a lack of diversity in the field. Uh, there's a few highlighted um, areas that need to be supported a little bit more, and one of them is women, one of them is visible minorities, First Nations, and uh, people with disabilities. So those were our focus, those were the applicants that we prioritized when we were looking around. 
We also had a very targeted approach. We worked with WorkBC, uh, the employment agency, of course, to find people who were already committed to finding a job in the IT field. Every library site did something a little bit different. I know on one library site they went public, they had hundreds of applicants that they had to filter down, and I think our target approach was was a good one, but we'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a little bit. So the learning circles is a really interesting part. It was developed by P2PU.org. It's an American nonprofit organization. And learning circles are free study groups for people who want to take online courses together in and in person. So there is a focus on collaboration. I'm not a tech expert. I'm not there as a teacher. I'm a learning facilitator. So every day I start with by asking them to share with me, what did you struggle with in this week? What uh, Did anyone find any cool resources that they'd like to share with the group? Um, I know that this learner over here has gone ahead and completed that assignment, and you mentioned to me earlier that you're struggling, so I'm going to pair you guys together. And just by teaching other learners, they've expressed that they're retaining the content a lot better and comprehending the information a lot better as well. We've noticed Already, just it is early on, but our attendance is quite good in Surrey. It's actually the best out of all the sites. Um, and so the learners are, there's focus on the in-person collaboration, and also they've created their own online chat group. So they're supporting themselves and each other off hours as well. So we're really flipping the traditional classroom model. I know in the BC curriculum for schools in elementary and high school, they've done something very similar, where there's a focus on collaboration and group work. It looks like a very unstructured environment, but it's a, it is a very structured environment in the classroom. Um, there's more, we find, I feel like the retention, a part of it is the increased social commitment. There's, this whole program is free, so they could just not attend the learning circles, and there's no punishment for doing that. But when one learner helped another learner last week, they feel uh, a commitment to come back the next week and see how they're doing and supporting each other that way. There's also, uh, we've noticed, uh, lots of community development happening. They're building both personal and professional relationships. A couple of learners after class, they went shopping together. They didn't know each other before then. They're um, like hugging each other when Ramadan ended in Eid. So it's it's an amazing program, and it's really remarkable what we're seeing with, with adult programming in this in this Google program. So we realized that not every library can receive sponsorship from Google to offer this program in their libraries. However, however, we felt that by having me present today, you could maybe adapt what we've learned from what our model and potentially apply it to other learning programs in your libraries. Libraries often receive requests for both leisure and educational programming. And library managers have the challenging task of attempting to deliver both with limited funds. We know that Washington State is leading the way with their workforce development librarians, and I feel that there's an appetite from library users in British Columbia for more technology development programs. In many cases, we're seeing that low-skilled jobs now require a solid grasp of computer technology skills. And many adults today aren't re uh, haven't received that training in high school, and experience too many barriers for college. So there's kind of this middle area where libraries can fit in for that. So far, we've been experiencing quite a bit of success with the GISE program over our edu other educational programs that we're offering over the same mediums. And I'm going to end it now and open it up for questions. Jennifer and Shane from Surrey Libraries will kind of elaborate a little bit more on uh, some of the educational online programs that we have. And I will also leave my business card behind because I actually have to run to one of the learning circles tonight. So I'm going to leave that um, on the table over there. So does anyone have any questions at this time? Yes? So how much um, communication or collaboration do you have with the other library systems that are doing it? Like, do you guys talk and you know exactly how it's working in the other spaces? Absolutely, that's a great question. So the question was how much um, communication is happening between the sites that are offering the libraries, between Surrey Libraries, Hamilton, Edmonton, Toronto. We communicate a lot. We're using Slack, and we have different channels and uh, for the learning circles, 
for uh, presentations that we're offering. And because this is new, and this was the first time we're doing it, we're learning from each other. So one person might say, oh, this, this was really successful on my site. You might want to try it at your site. So we're, we're learning from each other every day, absolutely. So you yeah. guys were chosen to, to be the, um can you please supply the is that right? The libraries? Yeah, so Google, um, we, yeah, we were chosen. Surrey Libraries was chosen by Google. Um, I'm not sure, I wasn't in the beginning stages of those conversations, so I'm not sure why they chose Surrey. I guess they saw it as a growing, kind of medium sized city. Um, so, yes, uh, they chose our libraries. We, we didn't really have to say in that. Hi. So in the future, though, this would be an $800 fee per person to take this course? To have, uh, I just did the math for, um, oh, sorry, the question was, yeah. Um, in the future, would this be $800 fee to take the course? I believe it's $65 a month for a uh, Canadian, for a Coursera account, a subscription. It depends on the kind of course you're taking, it varies, but for this course it's $65 a month, month, and they get 12 months of access, so roughly around $750-$800. Yes? But maybe just to follow up on that, so that's Coursera and Google, yeah. but there's nothing precluding you at all from, say, looking at PDP Use Catalog, which is fully open and free, and to support the Learning Circle model, and so cherry picking curriculum out of that. So then I mean, you can play in this sandbox, but there's yeah. free ways to do this as well. And, and PTPU, I think, is very much looking for library partners to continue expanding out that learning circle model. Yeah. So I'll just repeat that comment that P2PU is, uh, if you visit their website, p2pu.org, you can find a lot of resources and you can actually apply this model to any of the online courses. Um, it doesn't have to be the Google IT Sports Certificate Program. And P2PU is interested in partnering with other libraries throughout the lower, uh, the North America, <coughs> absolutely. And they've actually provided us quite a bit of support for this model. Do we have any more questions? Okay, I hope that was interesting for all of you. Again, my business card will be right here. And thank you for your time. Appreciate it.